Hello and welcome to Grid Masters. Today we're going to be taking a look at a cave or corral puzzle. It goes by both names. Corral, I think, is the more common name at this point. It's also been called bag in the past, but corral is the way most of us uh, recognize it. Uh, this is intended to be a beginner video, so if you're if you've already solved a cave puzzle or you sort of know what's up, you might want to skip past this one to one with some more intermediate techniques. So let's go through the rules. One, every numbered square must see, quotes, that many unshaded squares, including itself. So this three has to see three unshaded squares. This is probably going to be the first deduction we make, um, but that's, that's going to be important to us. Uh, number two, each shaded square must connect to the boundary of the grid. So if there's any shaded square whatsoever, it has to like escape to the edge. And there's going to be some stuff where we can fill in some nice things. Like I'm looking right here. These all have to be unshaded because if they were shaded, there's no way for them to escape. Oh, big important thing. Every number is unshaded. That's key to this, to that deduction that I just made. But we'll get into that a little later. Number three, all unshaded squares must be connected via edges. So we can't have all shading going down that way. That's just not going to work. So let's erase that. Okay, so that should be enough to get us started on here with some deductions. Now, sometimes corral or cave is presented as a loop puzzle. It, it actually is presented as a loop puzzle. You have to fill in the loop so that the inner squares and the outer squares are separated. That's how you know it's solved. But in competitions, if you just shade stuff, uh, the judges will be totally fine with that as well. So I'm going to go with yellow or unshaded here. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in all of my numbers, all, or I guess unshade all of my numbers already, because we know that every number is unshaded. So in this section, I can also do that straight away because that has no escape route for um, the shaded squares. Okay, and I said this three would be my first deduction. Well, I guess it's my second deduction now, but this three is already seeing one, two, three unshaded squares. So it can't see any other shaded squares. This will also be shaded because I can't, if it's unshaded, it would be five unshaded in a row. Um, so seeing is just vertical or horizontal uh, unshaded squares together. This shaded square here has to escape to a boundary somehow, so it's got to come out. Now here is one of the most, I guess I have two places for it two locations where we have one of the most important things about a cave puzzle. If I try to put a unshaded square there, then either this dark path will block off, these dark paths will block off this white section, or this unshaded section from this unshaded section. Alternatively, yeah, th so that's no good. I can't have that. Some people call that a Battenberg pattern when we have two uh, shaded squares going one way and two unshaded the other. Um, so if you hear me say Battenberg, that's what I mean. Hey, look here, Battenberg, that's got to be unshaded for a similar reason. If it's shaded, then this has to connect to a boundary, possibly down here, possibly up here. But in either case, this section will be completely separated from this section. So Battenberg gives us that. We could do a few other things here. This two cannot see that four because that would be three unshaded in a row. Then this has to escape to the boundary. So we already get some nice stuff with that. This four sees one, two, three. It needs four unshaded and then close that off. Okay, Battenberg. So we're getting some nice deductions already. This, this four is complete, Battenberg. This seven needs three more squares exactly. Has to escape. Okay, so a pretty good start. I think this ten. Oh, these fives are already. These fives are already set. I see one, two, three, four, five already. So that has to be shaded. This 
green section must escape. Battenberg, one, two, three, four, five for this five and shade it. Battenberg. Okay, there's no, unlike a Nurikabe, there's no two by two rule, so I don't know about the shadedness of this square at this point. Um, but we'll be able to determine it later quite quickly. Uh, I mentioned up here these fives are already seeing all five unshaded squares that they need to, so I have to close those off. Then these shaded squares do have to escape. The only path out for them is through there. So I already know that that's a shaded path. There's a lot of stuff that I can do right now. This is a pretty nice intro puzzle for a cave. The seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, needs a seventh. Okay, this seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, already closed. Battenberg, uh, this eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Has to be like that. Now, if it was a nine, this would also work. The, the, um, the green cells don't have any rules about all needing to be connected to each other. They just need to be connected to the grid or, or to the grid's boundary. Let's check out the seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven already. So I have to shade all the other possible sight lines. Uh, this 10 or this eight will give me this, this 10 will get me out here a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this four, I can only have, I only have four possibles, so it's got to fill out there. This three already has one, two, three shaded in there. Battenberg, love the Battenberg. Okay, these sixes might be interesting. Let's check out this four here. One, two, three, four, and then these shaded squares have to escape. So there we go. Now, I don't know whether this square right here is shaded or unshaded yet, uh, but if it's shaded, or if it's unshaded, one, two, three, four, in my six, I need at least two more unshaded. If it was shaded, I go even one step further. Um, but up here is where my next counting clue is. One, I have a six here, I need six unshaded. I have three right now, one, two, three, I need four, five, six. This, this uh, shaded square now has to escape. The shaded region has to touch boundary. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has to be shaded. One, two, three, four, five, six. This must be unshaded. And I had already counted 10 here, so that's got to be shaded too. That allows me to start filling out my loop pretty much. And all I need to do is put boundaries between my yellow and green sections. And soon after, uh, you should see the completed stuff popping up. So this is probably going to be the most boring part of the video for you, where I'm just tracing out these sections between the yellows and the greens. But you can see how, you know, with Battenberg, with just plain old counting, and with um, that escape route, cave puzzles become relatively simple. And we're going to be seeing completion right now. So that's cave. Hope you enjoyed it. Cave or Corral. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time.